Now the normal numbers that we use every day include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And if we want to have a number bigger than nine, we need to add another figure. So then we'd have one, zero, one, 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 two, and so on. You should be familiar with that by now. And this is our decimal system. And here, the deci part of this word means that we're looking at something to the base 10. Base 10 means we've got 10 different digits that we can use. But sometimes it's more useful to use just two values, 0 and 1. So we have 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. Now this is our binary system, and the word by means that we've got two different values, and this is something which has base 2. Okay, and I must say that this number here, 1, 1, is different to this number here, 1, 1. They represent different numbers. They look like they're written down the same, but we've got a different base and therefore they're different numbers. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Um, now let's just have the number 1, and then we're going to have the number 2, and then we're going to keep doubling each time. So we've got 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. Okay, this will all become clear in a minute. And down this column here, I'm going to write a decimal number. So we've got the number zero, okay? Now to represent this decimal number in binary, uh, effectively we don't need any of these numbers, so I'm just gonna put a zero over here. The decimal number one, represented in binary, is also one, because it's just made out of this one from this column here, okay? Bear with me, I'm just gonna go through the first 10 digits. If we think about the number two, well, we can't represent the decimal number two just using these digits, and therefore we've got to go to the next column, and the number two is equal to this number two here. So it's one, two, and zero ones. So this is how we represent the decimal number two in binary. The number three, it's made out of a two and a one. So one, one. The number four can't be represented with just ones and twos, and therefore I'm going to put a one in this column because it's made out of number four, uh, and no twos and no ones. And I'm just going to continue this for the next few numbers. So I've just got a few of the different values here. So this is the decimal number that we're used to, and this is how we represent it, just using a zero or a one. And we use this for a good reason. So zero and one, these are our binary digits, and effectively that means something can have one of two values. Now this is really useful when it comes to electronics because you can maybe have something which is off, in which case that represents a zero, or it could be on, in which case it's representing one. And these binary digits, we can call these bits. Okay, so that stands for our binary digit. And effectively we can use a different number of bits of information to represent different numbers. Now we represent the bit with a lowercase b, and we can use, we can look at the link between the number of bits used and the number of different values that this gives us. So I'm just going to call that n to represent the number of different bits of information uh, that we can actually represent with these bits. Now if we just have one bit over here, so the number of bits is one, this can give us, this gives us two alternatives. We can either represent a zero or a one, and that means the number of alternative values we could have is two. If we had two bits, okay, and I'm just going to put a couple of zeros up here, we can have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So if we had two bits, that gives us four possible alternatives. If we had three bits, again, if we're giving our information in three bits, then we'd give it as 0, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 1. Now, with three bits of information, there are eight possible alternatives. And as we go down the list, if we had four bits, this would give us 16 alternatives, and so on. In actual fact, there's a link between these two numbers, because we can say that this is equal to 2 raised to the power of 1, 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 2, we've got 2 to the power of 3, to the power of 4, and so on. Now we can write this as the number of alternatives is equal to 2 raised to the power of the number of bits. Now we can also rearrange this, and we do that by taking logs of both sides, but here we're going to be using log to the base 2. So the number of bits is equal to log to the base 2 of the number of alternatives. And the final thing is that if we had 8 bytes, this would give us 
256 possible values. Now 8 bits of information gives us 256 possible alternatives and 8 bits is what we call one byte. Now you can be very familiar with the word byte in terms of maybe kilobytes, megabytes or even terabytes and one byte is 8 bits and 8 bits of information give us 256 possible alternative values and this comes up quite a lot in computing. So that was just a brief introduction about the link between decimal numbers and binary and how the number of bits gives us this many possible variations of values that can be displayed.